Okay, where you want to start in Mastercam, you, you're always going to open up Mastercam X7. You've got to start with your machine type first. It's a router, and it's it's the Techno Servo RMD7. If this doesn't pop up here, which it won't, because computers are frozen, you got to start with router, manage list, and then you have to go down here to RMD7 and add it to the list. Hit OK, and then go back, and then it'll be on the list, and then you can select it. So I select Techno Servo RMD7. I'm going to go to Properties, Stock Setup. In my Stock Setup, I'm going to set the cutter in the middle of my board. And I'm going to take the overall dimensions of my board. Let's say it's 14 by 12. And after I'm done planing it, it's 0.6 inches thick. If I want to see this box, I hit display here, and then I can see it on my screen. Okay. F9 on my keyboard gives me my Cartesian coordinates. So again, you set up your tool, and then you set up your stock. And then you want to think about the tool you're going to use to cut it out. I'm going to use a quarter inch ball end mill. So then once I'm set up, from there, the next step is to create my geometry. So I go up to the Create tab. I want to create a rectangle. I want this rectangle to start at the origin and, and be centered at the origin. So this is center or anchor to center. So this is my actual board that I want to cut out. I want it to be 13 over by 11 up. And then I just click in the first quadrant. Green check mark says I'm done the operation. Up here is fit screen. So my, my board's smaller than my... Um, block of wood, which is good. So I have a way to fixture it down. Next thing I want to do is I want to put radiuses in the corner. So this is the fillet. So I'm going to fill it. It's saying, where do you want to fill it? I want to fill it this corner and this corner. And this is a radius size. I think I'm going to put a one inch fillet in that corner. A green check mark will hold it. And then I'm going to go back and fill it um, I want to fill it this corner with that same one inch radius. Green check mark, I'm done the operation. I'm going to fill it. These other opposing corners are going to make a little bit bigger. Let me try a three inch fillet for this <coughs> to that, and that to that. So there's my cutting board outline. I don't have any lines stacked on top of lines. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to offset one inch um, for the bled groove. Okay, so I'm going to go X form, offset contour. It's asking me to select the contour. I'm going to select it as a chain. It goes all the way around. I'm done selecting it, and it offset it out. So I don't want it out. I want to. Um, change the direction in, and it offset it a half inch. I'm actually going to offset it one inch. So I set the offset right here to one inch. Copy means it's going to create a new one. Move would just move it in, and copy reproduces it. <laughs> so there's my blood groove. That looks pretty good. In its offset, it wasn't able to actually offset that radius. So I'm going to have to go back to fill it. I'm going to It'll have a previous selection right here. I'm going to fill it this back to one inch and this back to one inch. So this up here, this button here is clear color, so it's all the same color. I'm all done with my geometry. My next step is the tool path. So the tool path is um, I need to think about fixturing. So that's how I'm going to hold it down. And why that's important is my order of operations is dependent on that. So I will have a little bit of room to use a plastic nail to hold it down here and here. Um, but I really want to cut out my blood groove first while the thing's fixed down. And then I'm going to cut the whole thing out. And then when I cut the whole thing out, it's going to pop up and I won't be able to cut the blood groove afterwards. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write my tool pass. I'm going to do my blood groove first. So I go tool pass. I'm going to select it as a contour. 
meaning I'm just going to go around. I need to name that tool path. I'm going to go to contour. Which side of the midpoint I click on on that line is going to determine which direction it goes. So if I click over here, it's going to go clockwise. If I click over here, it'll go counterclockwise. So I'm going to go clockwise. My arrow's going all the way around. And I have to remember this. I'm going clockwise. And then that brings me up. Uh, just a sec, Tyler. Let me, I'm videoing this, so let me get that later if it's okay. So I'm going to work my way down this left-hand column here. I'm going to go Tool. I said I want to use go to my Tool Library. I'm going to select a quarter-inch straight. No, I'm not. I'm going to select a quarter-inch ball end cutter. There it is, a quarter inch ball end mill. So I hit green check mark. My feed rate, I'm gonna set it 100. Inches per minute. My plunge rate, the rule on that, is half my feed rate, so that's 50. This blue square just holds my settings. And go to holder. I'm not gonna do any changes there. Go to cut parameters. Now I'm going clockwise around that blood groove and this is gonna put the bit on the outside of it. So if I put this bit on the outside of it, that means there's gonna be three quarters of an inch between the outside of my bit and the outside of my board. So I, I think I'm actually just gonna have it run down the center line. So I'm gonna turn this compensation type to off and now it's gonna run down the center line there. The depth of cut, oh, and then blue square will hold that. Depth of cut, I set this no matter what. This is also a safety. This is how deep it's going to go on a single pass. The rule is less than the diameter of the bit. Um, so I'm going to set this at 0.2. Blue square will hold it. Lead in, lead out. This is a lateral move, so it plunges outside the part and cuts in sideways. I don't want this because it's going to tear up my board so I deselect lead in lead out breakthrough no changes multi passes no changes tabs I'm not going to have any linking parameters these are all going to be absolute settings and this right here is how deep my blood groove is going to go this is going to be a negative number it's going to be negative 0.125 about an eighth of an inch Maybe negative 0.15 if you want a little deeper blood groove if you have a thick board. This holds my settings, and I'm done all my tool path for that blood groove. I'm going to create a second tool path to cut my board out. I'm going to go tool path, contour, and select it as a chain. I'm going to go around the outside of the board clockwise. Again, I'm going to use that quarter inch ball end mill to cut all the way through. At 150, those are good settings. Holder, cut parameters. I'm going to turn this compensation type back on. I am going clockwise. So this bit needs to be on left. And that means it's going to cut on the outside of the line because I'm going clockwise. Depth of cut. This is already selected. I'm going to keep that. Lead in, lead out. I'm going to make sure that's not selected. Breakthrough, no changes, multi-pass, no changes, tabs. I am going to put tabs on it. So I'm going to select tabs. I'm going to hit automatic tabs. And I'm going to hit tab all. And four tabs is probably good. Blue square. Linking parameters. I'm going to hit absolute on all these. This is going to be different for every single person. This thickness is dependent on what you planed it down to, and you have to use the calipers to check that. So this wood was 0.6 thick after it was planed. So I'm going to set this at negative 0.6. Green check mark. Now I'm all done tool pathing. This is where it's going to start. This is where it's going to end. My tool path is on the outside. This is key right here. Now I'm all done. I'm going to go file save as and i'm going to save this under my student folder and this is my mcx file okay so i'm going to hit save 
Actually, I'll just save this one on my desktop. And the way I title these is I go the size of my stock. So 13 X by 11. And I might type in their center cutboard. Again, this is my MCX file. I hit save. Now that I saved it, uh, I'm going to verify, which is how it's going to cut out. I click verify. This is a like a video animation of what it's doing. Um, you want to watch that in the isometric view. This is where the computers crash. So I always save it before I hit verify because this uses a lot of memory. I'm going to hit play. <coughs> It only cut out the board and it didn't cut all the way through. Okay. The reason why it only cut out the board is right here. That's the only thing selected. If I want to select both. This green check mark will select both. I can go back to stock setup here. I set this at 0.6. And I set my parameters on my cut through to negative 0.6, but it's a ball end mill. So I'm going to actually increase that to like negative 0.62. I changed the operation, so I got to hit regenerate here. Let's verify it again in an isometric view. Then I'll hit play. This time I did cut it out. It has that teeny lip because of the ball end mill, and those are my four tabs. The reason why I didn't do the blood groove was I didn't have it selected here, so I'm going to select them all. Verify one last time. Isometric view. So that all looked good to me. I was counting the number of passes. I was making sure that it um, did the blood groove first. So now I like it. I could ask somebody else in class to check it as well. I saved it. Now I'm going to go to G1. And this is not actually a save. This is a post. I'm going to take all this vector information and convert it into numeric code. And that's what I run out in the CNC. So I'm going to hit G1. It needs to be an NC file. I have to do this on the flash drive because the computers are not um, networked. So I'm going to hit the flash drive and I'm going to title this the same thing 13 by 11 center board. But this is an NC file, so I hit save. And now what it's doing is it's taking all this and convert, converting it into the numeric code. And that numeric code is what gets run outside on the CNC router. So here's the whole page of code. It's not that much. It's only 75 lines of code. I take this out into the shop and I open up my NC file and that's the file I run. Any questions on any of that?